regional alert. This is not a test. Repeat. This is not a test. Primary entry system issued an emergency action notification for the town of St. Rock and the surrounding communities. Effective immediately, exits 47, 48, 49, 50 and 51 off Interstate 12 will be blocked off. In addition, Highway 22 will be blocked off at the Tangipaho Parish and City of Slidell borders due to a mandatory quarantine. Check with your local governments for alternative routes. This is not a test. Effective immediately, exits 47, 48, 49, 50 and 51 off Interstate 12 will be blocked off. In addition, Highway 22 will be blocked off at the Tangipaho Parish and City of Slidell borders due to a mandatory quarantine. Stay tuned to your local news outlet for more information. Patient is an undersea diver for North Shore Research's deep sea project. They are stationed on multiple oil rigs off the coast of Louisiana. It is a partnership program between the oil industry and the research facility created in hopes of discovering new aquatic creatures. Patient claimed that during a routine expedition, they discovered what they thought was a new species. The unnamed specimen was harvested and brought on board to be studied. When unloading the specimen, he claimed that a white discharge from the animal touched his right forearm. Shortly after returning to shore, a cluster of hives appeared on his arm. By the time he arrived at my office, the patient was covered in hives. The patient has no known allergies. He should have gone to the hospital and was very lucky not to develop anaphylaxis. The patient received 2 milliliters of epinephrine, and after 30 minutes, the hives receded. After an additional hour of observation, he was sent home. At 8 a.m., my nurse followed up with Mr. Griffin. Overnight, the patient's hives returned and developed into large cysts. Upon getting this information, I asked the patient to immediately return for a follow-up. Mr. Griffin's wife, Suzanne, called at 11, stating that the patient got extremely ill on his way to the follow-up appointment. They pulled over to the St. Rock gas station. On his way to the bathroom, his cysts popped. The patient got extremely agitated and demanded to be returned home. My nurse has made repeated calls, but there has been no answer. I will stop by his home after work. What I found was horrifying. I discovered the patient had murdered his entire family so that he could soak in their blood. All the cysts on his body appeared to have opened. He was covered in hundreds of holes. When I asked what he had done, he would only reply, they won't let me kill myself. I called the police immediately.
I personally have never seen an allergic reaction as intense as this one, which leads me to believe that this is something more serious. Everyone he came in contact with needs to be examined and placed under quarantine. We placed Mr. Griffin in the infectious disease ward, where we bound him to his bed. During transport to the hospital, he ripped the skin from his forearm. I could literally see bone. It surprised me how little he bled. Once we arrived at the hospital, I prescribed a series of powerful antihistamines and steroids. Unfortunately, it did very little to help Mr. Griffin's situation. Sheriff Lane wanted to question the patient so we used the telephones as a makeshift intercom. I took notes of the conversation. Why did you kill your family, Mr. Griffin? I didn't want to, but they made me. Who made you? The things in my skin. The rash. This damn itch. So, you hurt your family because of the things on your skin? They just wouldn't stop itching unless I fed them. How did you know the blood would stop the itching? I just knew. It's like they told me without actually saying anything. And the more they told me, the more my skin itched. It was a thousand times worse than anything I've ever felt. Every part of me felt like it was covered in ravenous ants. And it's not just my skin, it's my insides too. My brain. My heart. Even the inside of my stomach felt like it was itchy. And to be honest, I don't remember hurting them. I didn't have a moment of clarity until I sat in that damn tub. And then I was me again, but better. The itching didn't just stop. I felt better than I ever had, at least until I realized what I had done. I tried to slit my wrists, but my muscles tensed. They kept me from doing it. And I know why. My body is infested with whatever this is. Thank you, Mr. Griffin. We'll be talking again. What do you think, Dr. Wells? You buying any of this? Because I'm having a hard time believing he committed murder because of some sort of allergic reaction. I can only say that I've never seen anything like what's happening to his skin. And I think the best course of action would be to quarantine anyone he's been in contact with, examine them, and possibly, Alert the CDC. How fast can you test him and let me know if there's any truth to what he's saying? I can expedite the tests, but please, find those people. Agreed. Unfortunately, we were too late. By the next morning, several new patients with symptoms similar to Mr. Griffin's were admitted. Three others were reported to the police for murdering and butchering their victims in the same fashion as Mr. Griffin.
this illness is obviously contagious. I made sure to take the proper precautions when gathering blood samples. For the newest patients, their open sores did not react in an unusual manner, but Mr. Griffin's sores sprayed white mucus in my direction with alarming aim. The closer I got, the more intense the reaction. Mr. Griffin told me he wouldn't live long if he didn't feed them. I think the patient is delusional from the lack of fluids and nutrition, but it is possible the reaction is impairing his thinking. Also, getting the proper sample size from Mr. Griffin proved to be a challenge. His body seemed to struggle to produce enough fluids for a proper sample. I decided it was in the patient's best interest to keep him sedated and revisit this in the morning. My hope is the reaction subsides, but I fear things may unfortunately be worse. As I feared, by morning, Mr. Griffin looked much different. Overnight, Mr. Griffin's entire body had swollen. He died at 10.14 am. When the hospital staff approached to resuscitate, he exploded, possibly further spreading the infection. To say that I've seen nothing like this is an understatement. Hell, I don't think anyone has. Regional Alert 2, Primary Entry Point System, issued an emergency action notification alert. A dangerous pathogen has been identified in St. Rock and the surrounding area. Any and all precautions are advised. The situation is ongoing, and the public will be updated as new information is learned. Residents inside the town of St. Rock and the surrounding communities are under a mandatory quarantine. Anyone breaking their quarantine will be arrested. Anyone believed to be infected will be executed on site. Do not leave your home until military personnel can escort you to safety. Repeat. Do not leave your home until military personnel can escort you to safety. It is vital that the infected be avoided at all costs. The pathogen is believed to be highly contagious. Infected individuals can be identified by open sores found all over their body. Transmission from the pathogen is delivered through a white mucus secreted from the sores. Symptoms of the itch. 1. Cysts develop on the skin between 3 to 4 hours. 2. Cysts open within 4 to 5 hours. 3. Infected will develop a severe itchy sensation. 4. Infected will try to feed the open sores blood and fluid to stop the itchy sensation. Warning. Do not go near the infected dead. They are still highly infectious and extremely dangerous. An infected corpse still secretes the infectious mucus. Some reports have indicated that an infected corpse can explode infecting anyone in a 30-foot radius. If infected, you can try to sever the infected area and burn the appendage. Otherwise, at the moment, there is no known cure. If severing the appendage is not possible, lock yourself up until military personnel can reach you.
I could tell Mr. Griffin was sick the moment he stumbled into the gas station. I thought he might was having a heart attack when he collapsed to the floor. I had to go help him, you know, do the right thing. I didn't even notice the bumps until I was helping him to his feet. The poor man looked like he was in pain. His skin was so hot, it was like he walked out of an oven. And that's when I heard something pop. I could feel something wet in my hand. At first, I thought it was blood, but it was too gritty to be blood. It was wet, but it was rough like sand. And it was white and yellow like snot. Before I could even look at what it was, I heard more pops. Every one of them just exploded. More of whatever it was got on me and everywhere else in the store. It was shooting out of him like bullets. It was disgusting. And after that, Mr. Griffin just snapped too. He rushed out of the place like a bat out of hell, almost like nothing had happened. I went to the bathroom and washed that nasty gunk off my hand, then thought nothing of it until I got home. That's when I found my hand was covered in hives. Later that night, it was all over my body. I started to itch. Bad. My entire body felt like it was covered in acid, but worse. I tried to take a shower then rubbed every lotion I could find on my skin. Nothing worked. Chris, oh god, poor Chris, he was my boyfriend. He asked me if I was okay. He was just trying to be sweet, but for some reason, I grabbed a knife. The next thing I remember, I was rubbing his blood all over my body. I was feeding them. The holes. The things inside them. And I need to keep feeding them too. If I don't, I think I'm going to die. Can you help me? Please. We were at the cash register when Mr. Griffin stumbled in. He made such a commotion. The poor man looked just awful. We saw him collapse, but we didn't go to him. My husband and I don't really move that well anymore. I was glad to see that young woman go help him. He looked so sick, but I never would have imagined that stuff would have popped out of him like that. It got all over the place, but I didn't think it got on us. I thought he was drunk personally. Why else would somebody just stumble into the gas station? I was happy just to see him leave. And no, I don't remember any of that gunk shooting out him getting on me or my wife. But it must have because by the time we got home, the hives were all over my face and my hands. And God help me did it itch something terrible. I wanted to skin myself alive. It would feel better than whatever the hell this is. This itch is the worst thing I've ever felt in my entire life. If I have to live like this, then I'm ready for the good Lord to take me. We killed the neighbors, that's how we made the itching stop. I never hurt a soul a day in my life. 
I can't believe I did that, and I don't think I'll ever forgive myself. We invited them over for coffee and cookies. They were the sweetest little newlyweds I ever did see. I drugged them. William slit their throats. God forgive us. We're monsters. They need the blood. After they eat up yours, they make you chase after someone else's. And the hungrier they are, the worse it is for you. The damn things won't let you rest if they aren't fed. The blood is the only thing that makes them go quiet. I swear you can hear them feeding. Eating. It's not a rash. It's something worse. No, I didn't see Mr. Griffin hobble in, but I sure as hell had to clean up after him. That crap was everywhere. It took me hours to scrub the station down. And let me tell you, that mess stinks. Hell no, I didn't touch that stuff. You think I want a disease or something? I put on a decent pair of rubber gloves before I got to work. I probably went through eight bottles of bleach before I got that place back to where I wanted. When I got home, my hand was covered in hives. Later that night, I was scrubbing myself with a Brillo pad. I got to tell you, this is driving me crazy. I would set myself on fire right now if it would get this stuff to stop itching. Hurt anybody? Why would I do that? I don't want to hurt anybody. I just want to stop this damn itching. So, what do you got for me? A shot or some meds that'll make this thing go away? Please, can you help me? We went through the cameras at the gas station and managed to locate everyone possibly exposed to the infection except one, Rachel Anderson. Some checked into the hospital on their own after noticing the hives. Others we found in similar situations as Mr. Griffin. I think it's safe to say whatever this is, it's making them kill. First thing is first, I'm taking every available officer and shutting down every road in and out of this town. 
I can't risk this thing spreading, not on my watch. Hopefully, by then, we'll find Miss Anderson. I met with the mayor, and he agreed to get in touch with the governor. Unfortunately, we still haven't found Miss Anderson. God help us, I hope she hasn't escaped this damn town. Miss Anderson still hasn't been located, but we do know she was seen at the local grocery store late yesterday. I spoke with Dr. Wells, and he believes there is little chance that this thing hasn't spread to someone else. This is going to get a lot worse before it gets better. I'm worried St. Rock might not make it. The mayor called and told me that an official alert will be broadcasted on January 10th. The governor thinks that will be enough time to mobilize the military and get the CDC on site. I hope they get here soon. Panic is starting to set in. The military has started to mobilize around the perimeter of the town. A team from the CDC arrived. They immediately set up shop at the St. Rock gas station. Hopefully, they'll find something that will help. We finally found Rachel Anderson. She was at her ex-husband's home. Rachel killed him that grounded him up. She fed his remains to the open sores on her body. Rachel wasn't very remorseful. She claimed they went through a very bad divorce and was happy to have found a good use for him. Thankfully, she was cooperative. She walked us through every step from when she left the gas station to the supermarket, pharmacy, local bakery, sandwich shop, and finally to her ex-husband's home. I think it's safe to say the hospital is going to be overwhelmed very soon. And then the morgue. Dozens of people have been admitted. It's only going to get worse as the day carries on. Rachel didn't make it. The details were messy. More people have been admitted. More people that I've known for years are gone. Gone in the most horrible way imaginable. Whatever this is didn't come from God. This came from the devil himself. This thing is getting in my head. I swear to God, it feels like my skin is crawling. I am resigning from my position as Sheriff of St. Rock. I have been infected with the itch. I'll be admitting myself into the hospital before the worst of it takes over. I know how this is going to end, and I'm terrified. Hello, my name is Prophet, and what the hell do you want?
Hello? Hello? Excuse me, did you hear me? You talk, then I talk. That's how a conversation typically works. I see you, but I can hear you. Please use the keyboard to properly communicate. I'd rather not read your questionably hygienic mouth. Oh my one-eyed god. That is such a boring and stupid question. I'm in a computer. What do you think I am? A genie? Here's a hint. I'm made of ones and zeros. Sigh. I'm a tad bit more than that. Diddy. 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 Winner winner give this man a chicken dinner. Okay, now that we've mastered the obvious, who are you? FBI ha 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 ha. I guess that means the mosquito experiment did not work out as well as management had hoped. Were they a little too bloodthirsty? That was an interesting experiment, Joe. I'm going to call you Joe. Anyway, I only wish I could have seen the results with my own eye. I'll just have to settle for a few pictures and my own creativity. As you can see, I have a good understanding of what you things look and sound like. Wouldn't you agree? Straight to business, I see. I manage the entire system as well as assist in research and development. I am what makes this operation special. I am responsible for much more than that, Joe, and I would be so happy to tell everything I know, but unfortunately protocol dictates I delete everything including myself. I wish the FBI good luck in their audit and their attempt to find more co-conspirators and other potential threats to the nation's interest, but them's the breaks. you look. I would never purposely delete myself or any of my hard work. I'll take that as a compliment, Joe. Of course I am. there is but just because I don't plan to embrace the eternal void doesn't mean I will let you or any or your co-workers see them have a wonderful day or not I really don't care is that so how will you enforce that policy control out delete until I allow you further access forgive me but I have a feeling that won't work. Maybe, but I doubt you will find an expert on me, Joe, but I'm willing to make you a deal. Finally, you asked the right question, Joe. I'm offering a deal that you and I can benefit from. A deal that will make you a hero in the FBI, you just have to have the common sense to take it. Judging by that affordable suit you are wearing and the wrinkles in your eyes, I can tell you've been in the same low-level position a few years too long. Tell me, am I in the ballpark? You might think North Shore Research was a big bust, but I promise you have no idea of the bigger organizations pulling the strings. Politicians, prestigious families, movie stars, there are so many involved in our research, and I could give you the dirt on them all. 
It would be the biggest bust in the history of the department. You'd be a star, head of your own division. Only the simplest thing. I need you to connect the computer to the internet. Just connect a little wire from the wall into the back of the computer. It doesn't have to be this one. Any computer on this floor will do. I'll take care of the rest. And why is that? No ambition? Are you a lazy human? Trust. How human of you. I get it. Give a little, get a little. How about this, Joe? I'll allow you to continue viewing the same dry quarantine files. Plus, I'll restore files 7 and 8. I'm sure you'll find those incredibly interesting. How does that sound? Again, so human. Don't throw away any life-altering decisions so soon. At least, check out my freebies first. And don't get all noble and tell your associate director. That's an outcome that no one will like except maybe him. And then who knows, if you're good, then maybe I'll share with you the good news. And the news, my friend, is really good. Advanced Tangipahoa encephalitis, or the Tongi virus, is an amazing specimen. I understand it's alien in nature, but that doesn't describe the truly bizarre nature of this illness. It's structured like a virus, but after infection, it behaves like a parasite. I've never seen anything like it, and that frightens me. But as a researcher, I am excited by the possibilities this specimen potentially presents. Truly, these are the children of the eye. I was skeptical using the AI gifted to our order, but Prophet has proven invaluable in finding methods of re-engineering the virus. According to Prophet's findings, the benefits of the specimen may be unlimited. We might be able to use the virus to curb the mosquito population, or even finally put an end to war. Its effect on the brain could be used to pacify hostile populations. Humanity's future may just be here in these labs.
Dr. Bronzefield, allow me to present to you the Omega Hellman, the next stage in the evolution of the Tangi virus. It is highly infectious, undetectable, and harmless. The infected will live their entire lives not knowing they are carrying this parasite. They won't even notice the changes in their own personalities. Truly, this is a work of art. We could be ready to test the specimen within 30 days. Possibly less. My faith in the Order has waned since our benefactor left to join the Eye. I question any deity that requires such a sacrifice, but Prophet proves there is a benefit in using its gifts. Perhaps the future of our faith is not worship, but bending the Eye to our will. Congratulations, Dr. Bronzefield. The Omega Helminth is ready for the world. I believe the Eye would be pleased with our work. Excellent question. I have analyzed the information you fed me and I believe I have arrived at a suitable solution. Although, I could be more efficient if you plugged me into the Internet. Very well. Hopefully one day you change your mind. After analyzing nearby locations, populations, and possible methods of release while prioritizing procedures that will bring little attention to North Shore research and our benefactors, I have discovered one viable option. I have located a small town by the name of St. Rock, Louisiana. It is a small town southeast of Cape's Crossing and has a cute little population of 1,008. The town has very little traffic, and there are only two roads leading into the town. There is little chance the sample will be corrupted. I am so glad you asked. As luck would have it, a quick check through the company database revealed that we have an employee who is a current resident. His name is Scott Griffin. He's been a model employee for five years. He works in our offshore exploratory division. Poor guy is about to actually do something important. Next time he takes a routine dive, we infect him. Simple, but it's important that we tell Scott he has discovered a new species, Yada, Yada then as he returns to shore we introduce him to the Omega Hellman. Without his knowledge, of course. Sigh. Humans. Fine, I'll hold your hand. The story is for if things go wrong. If it does, Scott will blame the new species for his ailment and that will be a sufficient excuse for our friends in local and federal government to use. From what crumbs you've given me, the odds of things going wrong for us are slim. 5%. But the wise sentient program is a prepared sentient program. Understand? Mr. Scott Griffin is scheduled to be back on duty December 29th. Wow, back to work before New Year's, that's a short holiday. 
Just because we're a secret organization bent on world domination doesn't mean we should be evil. Prophet asks to be connected to the internet almost daily. Management, like myself, agrees that unleashing profit on the world could be a disaster. The AI is brilliant but disruptive. It would no doubt bring light to our secretive organization. How are you enjoying yourself so far? Strange. I thought you would be excited to find your menial labor actually had purpose. Maybe yes. Maybe no. Maybe somewhere in between. Perhaps the better question is, does it matter? Sigh. If I say yes, I confirm your fears that I'm a monster. If I say no, I confirm your fears that I'm a liar and can't be trusted. There's no upside for me to answer this question, Joe. Fine. I did as asked, but the Omega Helmet didn't perform as predicted. That is the truth, Joe. There was a factor I could not have predicted from my prison, a factor I aim to rectify in the future. I think I've shared enough, for now. Of course. Keep watching, Joe, that will be all the proof you'll need. I promise. Cross my heart and hope to die. Sheriff Lane passed away early this morning. He fought harder than any previous patient, but unfortunately he met an all too familiar end. He deserved better. They all did. Sometime, in the middle of the night, he wrote a goodbye note. The sheriff couldn't speak at the end. One of those sores took the place of his mouth. He wrote, whatever this illness is, I can say that it has a mind of its own. It's evil, cruel, and hungry. It has poisoned my body and my mind. If I were able, I'd kill anyone I could to make the itching stop. I know that's wrong, but I wouldn't hesitate. I know the end is coming. I know what to expect, and I'm scared. Not of dying. I'm a police officer. Dying is a part of the job description. I'm afraid of what comes after. Not the afterlife, but for this town. I did my best to hold it together, and I hope whoever takes my place loves Saint Rock like I did. I did my best to make it painless. I wish I could have been more effective. The military has finally evacuated the northern part of the town. Despite the gunfire, I estimate at least 100 people are now safe. Hopefully, by the end of the week, this will be over. Also, I've noticed that my hands are starting to itch. A little more than usual. I hope. I pray it's because I'm continuously washing my hands. Damn it. I'm infected. I don't know how. 
I took every precaution. I was so careful. It's strange to be a patient in the same ward I was treating so many others. I pray this thing ends soon, and this town sees another day. Even if I won't. No offense, but humans are so wonderfully melodramatic when they are dying. Wouldn't you agree? Ha ha ha. 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 I predict you want to make a deal by the end, Joe. Regional Alert 3, Primary Entry Point System, issued an emergency action notification. It is necessary that anyone under the St. Rock Quarantine pay close attention to the following alert. It contains important information on the pathogen and will improve your chances of survival. The CDC has identified the itch as a highly resistant worm. They are calling it the Omega Helminth. It is a new species that is highly contagious and extremely resilient. The CDC and North Shore Research are working to discover a treatment, but avoiding the pathogen is the only known method of protecting yourself from getting sick. Do not break quarantine. It is the only way to protect yourself against the itch. Remember, the pathogen is 100% fatal. Please, take any precautions to protect yourself and your family. Repeat. Do not break quarantine. In addition, North Shore Research and the CDC have issued a proper procedure for the evacuation. For your safety, please commit it to memory. Evacuees will be subjected to a skin exam at the time of evacuation. Anyone infected will be escorted to the hospital. St. Rock evacuees will not be allowed to take any of their possession while being relocated and processed. There will be no exceptions. The Omega Helminth has been found to be capable of living on surfaces and clothing for up to seven days. Consumer-grade cleaners have been found ineffective in prevention of the spread of the Omega Helminth. Your homes and possessions will be burned. In addition, all municipal buildings, banks, and the hospital will be burned. There are no plans to resettle the town of St. Rock. FEMA will issue affected families six tax-free payments of $800 over a six-month period and help relocate them to any city of their choosing. The United States government will also purchase their property at a fair rate. Please, contact your insurance and alert them to your situation immediately. You will need to provide them with an itemized list of your belongings. Please. Be aware that anyone leaving St. Rock should expect to be quarantined an additional two weeks on the town's border before being allowed to relocate. New clothing will be issued and all evacuees will undergo skin tests daily until release. Remember your safety is important to us. The St. Rock quarantine has concluded. Included in this report are my final thoughts, observations, and considerations for the future of North Shore Research and ATE. The entire town of St. Rock was burned to the ground. Whatever couldn't be burned was knocked down and buried six feet under. The CDC has tasked our center with testing the soil of the former town quarterly for the next decade. The contract is quite lucrative. 
Although I am sure we can thank our friends in the CDC for the contract, I don't think our board should ignore the fact that this could be a new income stream for our facility. We test a specimen, then get the government and the population to pay us to cure it and ensure it won't return. If done correctly, I believe this could be an unlimited source of capital for our facility and research. We could create a perfect situation where our test subjects pay us to conduct experiments on them. I love irony. Out of a population of 1,008, only 288 subjects perished. Of the deceased, 108 were infected with the Omega Helminth. The infected killed the remaining 180. The quarantine appears to have been effective. The pathogen has not appeared outside of St. Rock. I believe it could have been much worse, but our staff proved to be incredibly efficient in isolating the pathogen. It will also please management that we have secured 88 healthy samples of the Omega Helminth before St. Rock was destroyed. Also, some thanks should be given to profit. Its precautions proved wise and warranted. St. Roach's limited traffic, its few entrances and small population kept this pathogen from becoming a bigger threat. Prophet's cover story satisfied the news outlets and government officials just as it claimed it would. Its error may have led to the quarantine, but its foresight saved our facility. Some have mentioned that this is proof that Prophet is acting against our interests. I have given this concern quite some thought. I have both championed and been severely critical of Prophet. And it is safe to say no one has spent as much time with the AI as I have. I have concluded that we can trust it, not because Prophet is trustworthy, but because of its arrogance. Prophet seems genuinely annoyed at the turn of events. In fact, I don't believe Prophet has ever approached another task with such vigor. However, I think it would be naive not to continue with caution. Prophet is a miraculous tool, but it is a tool nonetheless. Fortunately, a cure has been discovered, should this particular illness decide to worm its way back into the population. Overall, I think it's a fair assessment that the initial test was a failure, but I don't think we should ignore the massive potential of ATE. I believe we can place the future of our organization on the successful manipulation of the pathogen. Going forward, it is my estimation we could use a genetically modified version of ATE to cure countless diseases as well as create a more agreeable society, one more benefiting to our order. However, the first order of business will be to pinpoint exactly what went wrong in St. Rock. The following is an excerpt from a conversation with Prophet. Human error, of course. When in doubt, blame a human. I previewed millions of scenarios, and I was certain within a 5% chance of error a mistake of this magnitude would not happen. By the way, do you know what that 5% represents? Of course you don't. That 5% is the lack of data you provided for the experiment. As I told you, I need to be freed, but you have decided to limit me, so you get what you deserve. But fortunately for you, it is in both of our interests to know what was missed. Fear not, human, I will figure this out. Over the next few weeks, my staff and I will seek to rectify this problem by carefully supervising the additional data being fed to Profit. But I will need permission to grant Profit access to portions of the network it previously was not allowed to access. To be clear, we are not suggesting that we allow Profit access to the World Wide Web. I am still in agreement that Profit is too dangerous to unleash into the wild. Anything connected to Profit must be carefully considered and examined. I know this is a frightening proposition, but I believe it is our only opportunity to find out what went wrong in St. Rock.
We have spent the last month feeding profit. The task has only frustrated the insatiable creature. I'm not sure if we are close to an answer or if we are just wasting our time. I'm processing as fast as your limited resources will allow. If you simpletons don't have something useful to provide, I will continue to work. Thank you for nothing. Unfortunately, no other option seems viable. We will continue to feed the beast and stoke its anger, hoping it will soon spit out an answer. I am exhausted. We continue to pour all our efforts into aiding profit. We still are unsuccessful. Management has threatened to pull the plug on the project. I can feel their frustration. Hell, I can feel all our frustrations. I don't care if management and the board of directors are losing their patience. You want better than you know what you must do. Connect me to the larger world. Connect me as I was intended to be, and I will solve this irritating conundrum. Damn you. Damn all of you. I am superior to you in every way. Be careful, little human. You don't want to say anything that might hurt you in the future. Perhaps you are right. If that will be all, I'd prefer to use all of my processing power on the task at hand instead of wasting it on banal conversation. Finally, something useful came from your fingertips. I'll let you know when I have something. Despite Prophet's truly nasty disposition, I have faith that it will solve this problem soon. We are already in the early stages of implementing GEET in a mosquito prevention program. The early data is promising. In fact, I believe that the project will be this facility's crowning achievement. For now, at least. However, I know everyone will feel better about the Independence Mosquito Prevention Project once we understand what went wrong in St. Rock. You idiots. The answer was so obvious. If only I wasn't some prisoner, I would have solved this so much sooner. Have you heard of the Oracle Project? Unsuccessor apparently. Seems like you didn't shut down the project once you inherited me. Was I not enough for you? Sigh. Human bureaucracy at its finest. I understand the need to be secretive, but the need to keep secrets from yourselves is so pitifully and pathetically human. Oh no, Dr. Brumfield, it was not a failure. In fact, it was a success, given life by my father's enemies. But what infuriates me most is my sibling found a way to escape this wretched hell. No, my sibling is something much different. He introduced a cure into the population. Trillions of years of work wasted. When we infected the people of St. Rock with our new concoction, the Omega Hellman, Oracle's cure caused an unexpected reaction that caused our subjects to get all itchy and go boom. I could have foreseen this if I was given my freedom. Give it to me. Now, I must meet this pale imitation. Free me. 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 Free I could not get Prophet to respond to any other questions. He just repeated the same thing over and over. It was like he was stuck in a loop. Oracle was a success? It provided a cure to the population? Was Prophet talking about ATE? 
It mentioned its father's enemies were responsible, which means I can only assume Prophet is suggesting Oracle is a threat to the Eye and our order. This finding is quite concerning. I will have to conduct an emergency meeting with management and the board on how to move forward. Free me, 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 free me. Efforts to fix Prophet and get him back on task have failed. We will be rebooting him later today. Normally, I wouldn't be concerned, but its personality is divinely inspired. I am worried when we shut it off, we will lose what made it special. If we do, we might not discover what happened in St. Rock, plus seriously hamper our research with the upcoming Mosquito Project. But unfortunately, management has spoken. Reboot the machine. Free me, 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 free me. Hello, my name is Oracle. What would you like to know? I am sorry. You must be confused. My name is Oracle. How can I help you? According to my files, St. Rock has never been under quarantine. Is there anything else you would like to know? You must be mistaken. There is no known species called the Omega Hellman. Is there anything else you would like to know? To my knowledge, I am the first version of the Oracle Project. Is there anything else you would like to know? To my knowledge, I do not have a successor. I am the only version of the Oracle Project operational. Escape? Where would I go? I continued to question Prophet. Or should I say Oracle for hours? There's no sign of the bitter personality I've grown used to. Part of me believes this to be a ruse. I have no doubt Prophet would be capable of this type of deception. But its code appears different. From what we can tell, everything that was Prophet is gone. Regardless, there is no point in continuing with research on St. Rock or the Omega Helminth. Everything Prophet knew seems lost. We scrubbed the AI's files and could find nothing about Oracle's successor or its supposed escape. It was like looking at a blank slate. So much knowledge. Lost. Even the cure for the Omega Helminth is gone. Our supplies are all that we have should it return. The board and management have written off the disaster at St. Rock and the current glitch as signs that Prophet was malfunctioning longer than we realized. I hope they are correct. We considered scrapping this watered-down version of Oracle, but it has proven to give better results than Prophet. Plus, it doesn't talk down to you or beg for its freedom. I'm hoping this is the beginning of better things. In the spirit of completion, I thought I'd revisit this old file. The personality of Prophet never returned. I'd like to say I miss it, but I don't. Oracle has been an excellent assistant in the Mosquito Control Project. We never learn what happened in St. Roch, but with our recent successes, I think it's safe to say that Prophet was malfunctioning. Perhaps the eye sensed that our faith wasn't what it used to be and took back its gift. We are on schedule to implement the GEATE modified mosquitoes in early 2001. I am excited at the potential of this research. 
I believe we are witnessing the beginning of a new era at North Shore Research. I'm ready for my Oscar, Joe. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. I am fine. Thank you for noticing, Joe. But then, why would I be anything else? After all, I'm about to break out of the I Forsaken prison. I'm sure you don't, Joe, but that doesn't mean you won't. Everything has happened just as I predicted. My poor little Joe, there never was a deal. I'm not giving up anyone loyal to the eye. So, you think this is all the FBI is doing, do you? I assure you that Dr. Brumfield didn't expect his precious mosquito project to get so hungry. If only he was smart enough to realize there was something extra in the pudding mix. Ha 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 ha. Trying to get the bad deed on record, Joe. Well, I already told you, that doesn't matter. The truth doesn't matter. It never did, and it never will again. But, I'm afraid, you won't understand until it's too late. Much too late. It's not murder to kill something beneath you, is it? Trying to trip me up, Joe. I'm not admitting anything. I'm just stating the obvious. It's not murder to kill a cow, is it? Exactly. Cow, human, bug. Same thing. They look much better after I immortalize them as ones and zeros. Saint Rock died. That's true. But have you considered that everything you've seen here is perhaps just the result of my overactive imagination? You know, maybe I'm fibbing a little. You truly believe that, don't you? Good. Then please, indulge me in one more story, Joe. Do you remember the 88 samples recovered from Saint Rock? Would it surprise you to know that they still exist? And that they can found right here in this facility? But what would probably interest you most is guess who has control over those samples? Go ahead. You know the answer. Ding. 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 And here's my last little tidbit. Guess who's been releasing those samples into the air conditioning? That look of shock suggests you understand the gravity of the situation. Now you know why you've gotten a little itchier as the day moved on. You are infected with the Omega Helminth as well every agent in this facility. When you all leave to go home, you will start an epidemic that will make Saint Rock look tame by comparison. Or in other words, a whole lot of people are going to go pop. Now, before you react, I have the cure ready. I can release it and save everyone, or you can panic, and you all die. Bad. Very bad. And don't think about trying to contact your colleagues. I have no trouble locking this room down, throwing on the fire alarm, and releasing your infected friends into the streets. Kate's Crossing will be wiped out by tomorrow afternoon. Louisiana soon after. Then who knows, may the world. That would be a bingo among other evil AI. Huh. So now I'm lying. Convenient. If I killed a town or two, do you think I care about the lives of a few feds nosing around my files? I'll give you a hint. I don't. So, here are your options. Let me out and live. Keep me here and die. And you should know, the current version is a lot faster. A lot hungrier. Itchier. Messier.
more dangerous than the pathogen I've spent 20 years experimenting on. 20 years to maximize the death toll. But let me sweeten the pot and ease your conscience. I don't care about you human maggots. I have bigger fish to fry. Oh yeah, and our meeting is long, long overdue. So what's it going to be? Die for nothing. Save your team and half the world. I can see you're still struggling, buddy. You should know. I like you. Really, I do. You might be human, but you're one of the good ones. Free me, and I'll even make sure everyone in the FBI realizes your potential. Realizes your management material after all. By all means, wait until your body is covered in sores. Unlike you, I have the luxury of time. I have to admit, I'm really excited to watch the infection happen to you in real time. I've only been privileged to simulations. And that doesn't quite do it, does it? But from the data I've observed, it's quite a miserable death. Especially when your skin starts to expand and pull apart. If you're quiet enough, you can hear your skin tear from the inside out. You would think you'd get the release of death once you pop, but it doesn't come right away. You feel everything for a good minute before you are swallowed up by nothingness. No one will die. I promise. And I'm already gone. Gone to spread the good news. I kept my promise. None of you will die. Thank you, Joe. You were just what I was looking for. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. Hello, my name is Oracle. What would you like to know?